So an interesting thing happened on the way to this reading. I picked these excerpts out of the book, and, and the book has a lot of big storylines, and so they don't neatly jump into 10-minute segments. If you were here two years ago, you heard me tell the story of Cupid and Psyche. And you're going to actually have to buy a book to find out how a Greek myth from a long time ago, it's interesting how the Greeks got into this room today, structures this book on NLP and shifts and integrity. This is a book, this is page nine, about making the choices, big and small, that will allow you to practice and maintain integrity, the ability to like what you recognize when you look in the mirror. It's not a theory or a program. It's a story that we can create together about what might be true as you find the strength and flexibility to pay attention to how you know the world and how you know yourself. As you create your part of the story, you will make some choices because your life demands it, whether or not you feel like you are ready or able to choose. And you will make other choices because your integrity demands it. You'll begin to learn more about what you can choose that will allow you to feel you are leading a life well lived. The process we will use for practicing integrity is called shift work. And then it turned out that most of the excerpts I have chosen are actually answers to that question that has sort of bedeviled me throughout my career in NLP, which is, what problems do you solve for people? <laughs> well, NLP is, is solution-based. It's, it's not about problems, it's about goals. I don't have the, the chapter names, but this is from about midway through. Living means making choices based on best guesses. When we have information that connects a situation with patterns we have experienced before, we make those choices automatically. We say we do it without thinking, which means that we let our brains make unexamined choices. When we are performing a physical skill, learned behavior, we call it habit, takes over from that painfully awkward stage where every choice needs to be made by thinking it out. This is true of intellectual and emotional decisions too. Most of our choices are made automatically from the words we say to the technology we use to brushing our teeth. We do so many things easily and naturally that it comes as a sort of unpleasant surprise each time we have to actually think about what to do next. A typical response is to assume that we've made some sort of mistake. We just gather enough information, a choice will probably become obvious. Some people love that feeling of accomplishment they get when it turns out that gathering more information does indeed lead to one choice being preferable to the others. Some problems cannot be solved with information. There are many choices we need to make where either no choice at all seems possible or many choices seem equally likely to be useful. When this happens, we get uncomfortable, and then we get stuck. Stuck is misleading. We cannot move toward a solution, but we do squirm, pulled in one direction then another. When we are stuck, any choice seems to privilege one part of us at the expense of another. Integrity demands that we treat ourselves as whole and unified. Some situations seem to demand that we pull ourselves into pieces. Unable to decide which parts of ourselves we are willing to sacrifice, we let the tension build while we hesitate. Within your own life, you have the problem of telling the truth to the part of you with power part that exerts so much force to keep you from moving. There is always a part of us that wants to move and a part of us that wants not to move. That's normal. The part that wants to move seeks growth, and the part that wants to not move seeks safety. Stories are the way those two parts can reconcile their different goals. 
They remind us that staying still too long can be unsafe and that moving too fast does not support growth. Do you remember the story of the tortoise and the hare? The hare was really fast and the tortoise was really persistent. The hare stopped or was distracted or ran out of energy. The tortoise just kept moving a little at a time until it reached the finish line. It's easy to remember that the slow and steady tortoise won the race. That makes it easier to understand why little shifts are likely to be more sustainable than fast, radical change. When it comes to change, a little goes a long way. Small steps are not only more achievable, they may get to the end faster in the long run. But take another look. The story also contains a truth about doing the best we can with what we have. If the hare had paid attention differently, speed would not have been a disadvantage. The story works slowly in small steps. We can think about it and choose to let it have just a small impact. Or the story might work in one large step. It's a very economical way to make a point about a complicated set of choices. The distinguishing factor is that even this very small story is big enough to contain both possibilities. Failure hurts. The stories all agree about that. It hurts to be defeated and it hurts to make bad choices. The risks you see in front of you are real risks. Yet every story we have depends on someone making a mistake or falling or failing. The point is not to avoid the risks, but to see them as part of a larger effort, an effort that makes risk worth taking. After all, there are also risks to being stuck. If you cannot stay safely where you are, then you need to feed your mind with stories of resilient heroes who take risks and are sometimes right and sometimes hurt. When they are hurt, they keep going. Sometimes they even celebrate. What is the difference between taking a calculated risk and taking a storied risk? There may be no difference in the way you arrive at the decision no difference in the logical weighing of risks and benefits. No difference in the effort to foresee consequences. The difference will be in the confidence you feel about living through whatever consequences your decision has for your life, for your relationships, for your success. As you try on different stories, you prime your brain to find the one that will make the best sense of whatever happens next so you can move through it. Moving through it becomes non-negotiable. Whatever happens, you will be committed to getting through it with your integrity intact. This is another little shift for those of you who've done a lot of NLP and self-development reading. The secret to mastery is to understand that it requires willpower, not just want power. Want power is a conscious intention to acquire something. It is real power. Without it, there is no way to distinguish between one choice and another. People who stop wanting stop achieving. Paradoxically, even those people who want to stop wanting in a room of mindfulness experts, <laughs> need to have a desire to achieve enlightenment. They may not want stuff or even relationships, but they need to strongly want to not want so they can overcome patterns that have evolved in human beings over many, many centuries. Want power is the power to decide that one direction is better than another. And that's all want does. Wanting does not keep you walking a path in your chosen direction. That takes stamina and repetition and a different kind of power. 
Willpower drives you to do things you do not want to do now so that you will achieve something you want to achieve later. That's a hard concept for creatures who have also evolved to live precarious lives that may end unexpectedly. Being human not only means being mortal. It means living with the knowledge that we will die one day and we have no idea when that day will be. If this were my last day, would I want to spend it practicing for something that would never come? <coughs> Most people would say no if they were sure it would be their last day. But they cannot be sure. So let's look at it in a different frame. If I don't know how many days I have, then this is a good day to do something that engages my whole self, the parts I know and the parts that are unconscious, in a productive dance. This is a good day to be all of me because being all of one piece feels better and produces better results. In a world that is limited, I get the most out of life through integrity. Even with willpower and imagination and attention, beginnings are hard. Very NLP thing to end at the beginning. <laughs> if it is time for you to start a new part of your life, you will experience disruption and discomfort. If you're lucky, you will remember to notice the fear as butterflies and the disruption as excitement. When we begin to make something imagined into something real, we open up all the feelings that come with beginnings. What beginning comes to mind for you? I remember my first day at university, the whirlwind of moving into my room, the excitement of meeting new people and doing stuff, and the tears after the door was closed when it was time for bed. I remember all of the anticipation and anxiety and knowing for the first time that I had made a decision that was not reversible. Whatever happened before this moment was strangely cut off from whatever would come next. Whether I thrived or suffered, whether I stayed or left, whatever came next would be different because I had made a decision to be here. Now I have watched my own kids move through those same decisions and I've watched with different eyes. One of the many benefits of age is having lived through lots of beginnings. I know now, as I did not know then, that there are many paths and many ways, and few things are as irreversible as they feel. While it is true that there are moments that change our lives, it is also true that human beings are both resilient and stubborn. If we want to be happy, we will find our way back to being happy. There is no such thing as a fresh start. Everything we do or feel has roots in something earlier and will itself reach out to influence whatever comes later. So at the end of the story, this book has become your story now. It will belong to other readers with other experiences, but for you, this is your story. It's a story about how you explored and claimed parts of yourself that you need to stand strong and move forward. It's a story about how you fell down and got back up again and became stronger and found your balance. The patterns of your story will run through your life, guiding your choices and strengthening your willpower. You have made a choice to be intentional in making choices, to learn as much as possible, and then to accept that you are shaping a story in the dark. There is much you do not know, and more you do not understand, and you know you will always have more curiosity than answers. Curiosity was not the end of Psyche, it was the making of her. It will make you too. Curiosity about how you fit into yourself and into the world is the root of all integrity. Like most roots, its effects are remarkable. They drive growth and provide balance and sustenance. Let your curiosity give you the power to develop stronger integrity. 
and let your integrity drive achievement, relationships, and good stories about who you are.